Hi guys, this is my dog. His name is Bullet and he's a five-year-old German Shepherd and um, I, I've already taken him to three different vets to see well, what is the issue. He has really severe constipation and painful defecation, um, straining, and at this point I don't know what to do and the vets don't know what it is and they just keep prescribing medication but it doesn't seem to be helping and the last vet that I took him to I still have not bought in the medication because it's so expensive and really I don't even know if it's going to work um, so far we've given him antibiotics and, and just medication that would lower the inflammation um, as you can see in this picture he He's also getting very thin in his um, lower back area. I don't know if um, you can see it in this picture, but um, he is getting thinner, but he is eating. He's willing to eat, but he's just unable to um, defecate, and he is getting thinner. Um, in the next picture, this is what his... Um, anal area looks like and as you can see there's also um, there's inflammation there's a, like a lot of skin that is around his anal area and this happens specifically when he's pushing or when he's trying to defecate um, and recently before he would be able to defecate but it would be very painful and I had to give him a lot of fiber you know, pumpkin every day and olive oil in his food just so he could go, but he, he was able to go, but he would still strain. And um, now he's not able to go at all. And as you can see in the picture, there's, you could see the, um, you know, the poop, uh, but you're, um, he's not able to actually defecate that. It just, it pops up, but it's not able to actually come out. So in the previous video, uh, you could definitely tell that he's straining and that it's very painful for him. He's, you know, crying in pain. And um, before he was able to pass stool, and again, if I give him olive oil or pumpkin, then it comes out normal like this picture. Um, and then now, uh, and then sometimes, even if I give him olive oil, or if I don't, if I forget, um, Sometimes he'll get bloody stools. Um, either even if I give him fiber, he might still get bloody stools. And um, now he's not able to defecate at all. This is the first vet that saw our dog, and it was a mobile vet, and he prescribed these um, injections and medication. And the first time he prescribed this, it seemed to help. But he still had the straining and I had to make sure to give him the fiber and he prescribed this medication recently about I believe now it's two weeks ago but it has not reduced the inflammation at all so I don't think they seem to be working at this point um, they don't seem to reduce any inflammation um, this is the second vet that I took him to and this was in an actual vet. It was like a small clinic. The doctor said that it can be, it could be perianal fistula. Um, and she said that they were not common in German Shepherds, which is not true. I actually did my research before and it's actually very common in German Shepherds uh, just due to the fact that they have a different you know, structurally they have a different kind of body and sometimes if they hurt their um, hip area, it could even affect their ability you know, to go to the bathroom and a lot of other issues. 
So um, she prescribed antibiotics and an, a topical ointment. And um, I paid for the antibiotics. I did not pay for the topical ointment. I didn't have enough money to pay for it at the time. But I also did... I also wanted to wait and do further research on the ointment to see if it would work, to see if it was worth paying for it. And I found out that there were, um, you know, in forums um, that people that tried this type of medication and it didn't work. And it was multiple people that wrote, you know, their experiences with this type of medication. And so just... You know, sometimes you don't always want to trust what forms say. You don't know if people, you know, use it correctly. But if multiple people are posting this and are writing the same experience, there has to be some truth in that. Also, uh, in this vet visit, we, uh, I asked them to have his glands, anal glands, uh, cleaned. Still had this issue even after this was done. Um... It didn't seem to change anything. He was still able to defecate. The vet also did an anal exam and she confirmed that he doesn't have any tumors uh, and there's no possibility of prostate cancer at all. Uh, and she confirmed that. Also, she uh, recommended that he have a blood test just to make sure that the medication wouldn't affect him or to see, that, to see if his blood cells are normal. She didn't give me a callback uh, regarding the blood cells, so I'm assuming that they're normal and there's nothing wrong. And um, also I forgot to mention that he tends to lick uh, his anal area and he also tends to eat his poop when he, when he was defecating, he would eat his poop. And I read that that is because they will eat their feces because it's more easier for them to digest it, or so more e easier for them to uh, extract it afterwards. This is Bullet, and he's trying to um, defecate. He is pacing around, and um, it's very hard to see right now because it's dark time. At this point, he's actually not able to pass his stools, and uh, it's very inflamed back there. And the hole is so small because of the inflammation. This is the third bed I took bullet to. Um, this was a larger hospital, emergency hospital, and I took him for a normal appointment. And the doctor also confirmed that it is perianal fistula, and he said that it is normal and common in German Shepherd breeds. He also did an anal examination uh, and also put bullet under sedation to do the examination and uh, he confirmed that it is perianal fistulas but I, I don't think that he was able to see the inflammation that I'm talking about because it only happens when you know he's actually trying to defecate when he's actually pushing and specifically when he's pushing that's when you can really see the inflammation come out so I don't really think he was able to see that accurately through that examination because at that point he's not pushing he's you know laying down on the on the table I also requested that they do x-rays just to make sure that he doesn't have anything lodged uh, in his stomach or in his rectal area and according to the x the um, x-ray interpretation uh, they said that he doesn't have anything and that everything appears to be normal uh, my other concern is that it could be a perforation that at this point has become so inflamed 
just because of an open wound, a wound that has been opened, uh, but the x-rays don't really show that, and I'm assuming an ultrasound will, and I'm actually considering doing that just to make sure that he doesn't have any uh, perforations. Also, the only thing the vet noticed in the x-ray is that there is hardened stool in his bowel area and again that is because he is constipated and he's not able to pass the stool um, and later they were offering me if I want to proceed with an enema uh, this was via email um, or uh, to give him Marilax and I just I don't see how that Marilax can be prescribed with you know fiber I mean, why are you prescribing fiber if there is inflammation? You know, you have to actually solve the root of the problem first, solve the inflammation, reduce the inflammation so that the stool can pass. Why would you all of a sudden recommend, you know, more fiber? To me, what it seems is that these vets just, they're just expensive. They keep mounting more things to pay for and try this and try that and they're just not sure for the medication and the actual prescriptions uh, that were given and uh, th this doctor even prescribed a specific type of food which is um, specific to dogs that have digestive problems um, and they're designed this the food is designed this way to prevent uh, any uh, irritation in the bowels so you know he keeps prescribing these um, a diet and then uh, the medication but it never did he mention hey this I've had these patients that also had the perianal fistula this is what happened they, there's a you know 50 50 percent chance or there's a there's a to me it just seems as though they're not really addressing the root of the problem and they're prescribing you know, long-term medication and long-term diets and buy this brand and buy that brand. And I just don't see them actually, you know, trying to solve the root of the problem and, you know, saying, okay, this is what will actually work. There's no actual certainty. So to me, that just tells me that, you know, why would I trust what you're saying if, you know, that you don't have any proof that this recommendation or the solution has actually worked with your other patients um, and not to mention the actual medications are expensive one of them costs like eight hundred dollars which I did not buy because I after the consultation and all the other fees that they add such as the sedation and um, and then the x-rays and then for someone to interpret the x-rays so many different fees Obviously, I couldn't even afford to, you know, at this point, pay for that medication. I still have the prescriptions there. I, I went to ask just to see how much it cost. The other one cost $20. Uh, and I'm just trying to do more research beforehand before giving my dog these type of medications because you just never know. They, they're medications right they're, they're prescription drugs so they're very strong and I don't want this to somehow affect my dog or to affect the kidneys it's just like a human being when you are constantly taking medications you have to make sure that you're healthy um, to be able to tolerate these medications and over time these medications can be very damaging to our kidneys and to our other organs because they are very strong and and this doctor didn't um, ask or require a, a blood test. Um, they asked uh, for the other uh, previous vet to send those in, um, uh, to send them a copy of the results to them. Uh, but I still didn't get a call back for them saying, hey, you know what, based on the blood test results, these medications seem to be fine. Your dog will be able to tolerate it. None of that. Uh, none of that type of follow-up so it just to me it just seems as though it's a business and and it is right they, they just you know go to the next person to the next person they did they don't really seem to follow up and if they do they're just asking would you like to try this would you like to try that you know just keep mounting uh, more services or more things that 
you know, you have to pay for for another visit. And I just don't see them actually concerned with the patients. I just want to mention for the third vet, uh, they did call to follow up on the x-ray, of course, because I paid for that. But then afterwards, as far as the follow-up, and if you ask questions, they don't really give you too many answers. And it seems as though, you, you know, you have to pay again for another visit if you want to ask more questions. Um, or even if maybe it's not just, you know, I try to ask questions during the vet, everything I can think of. But then, you know, you're noticing other things or maybe you forgot something and or you just want to know okay what else can I do you know this is happening what else can I do and it, you have to either you know pay for another visit or you you know like in the in my case what happened was I was telling them that my dog is now constipated and he can't go to the bathroom and so they said oh if you want we can do an enema you can bring him back and we can do an, an enema and I thought I, I'm not going to br first of all it took a while for me to bring him there because it was an hour away and now I need to pay another visit you you couldn't tell me that while I was there now I have to pay another visit to do this enema so that's what I'm trying to say is they keep you know oh pay for another visit oh you want more information okay pay for another visit oh you want more help okay pay for another visit it's just and so at this point I'm just really fed up I'm really fed up with all you know the different types of vets they're not really addressing the root of the problem and um, again I've I've uh, tried two different vets and I have bought the prescriptions for the two vets I only the only one I didn't buy was for, from the second vet, I didn't buy the ointment, and that's because, again, I researched and I saw that it didn't work. Um, so I was not going to waste my money on that. And the third vet, I did not buy any of the prescriptions yet. I have still to to do that, but again, like I'm saying, you know, if I, I've already tried two different vets, two different medications and antibiotics, um, and if they're not working and another doctor is prescribing me the same thing, you know, another something else for the inflammation and to reduce, you know, antibiotics or t to reduce the inflammation. To me, I just, I'm just saying that the pattern, if it's not working the first time and it's not working the second time, why would it work the third time? And really, they're just not that concerned to say, you know what, what if it's something else? So um, that's pretty much what I think right now. Uh, also, I, um, I would like to mention that uh, my dog has pretty much eaten kibble all his life and most of these veterinarians will say that, you know, kibble, try different kibbles, maybe that one is, your dog is allergic to it, maybe, you know, the chicken, maybe it's still, they need to try lamb, maybe they need to try fish, etc. Um, and we did try changing the cereals, but he still seemed to have the... A constipation problem and um, finally I think it was a year ago or a year and a half ago I did some research into raw diet and I, I talked to my dad about it and he told me that I he recommended that I don't try it because the dog is older now and it should have been done when he was a puppy and so at this point if I tried to do that that it would affect the dog and this was about a year ago. It's it seemed to be logical, so um, I didn't try it. But I just thought that okay, it, it has to be the food that is causing this to happen. So there has to be a change in the diet. And I kept doing research on, you know, raw raw food, raw diet, and people changing their dogs into to raw food and how it actually benefited their dog and their dog started improving and they didn't have these skin problems they didn't have these digestive problems they were able to digest the food correctly and I just started getting really desperate after seeing okay two vets and it, this is not working and of course if I if I even ask a vet hey what if I try vet uh what if I try raw food diet 
they're going to tell me don't do it. They're going to discourage me to do it because the vet situation and pet stores and pet food stores, it's a business. They profit off of this business. And of course, you know, of course vets also are, are intelligent. I'm not saying that they're not. Of course they know how to take care of, of the pets and they know what to do in emergency situations. But as far as raw food diet, they don't recommend it. And uh, they don't even talk about that. They don't even try to mention it. Yeah, maybe you should try that. So, I mean, I, I didn't even mention that to any of the vets that I spoke to because I already know the answer. They're not going to recommend that type of diet. They're going to recommend most of the vets I spoke to, or actually just one of the vets I spoke to uh, recommended uh, kibble with fish oil. And the third one recommended a type of food called Royal Canaan and um, and the first the second vet didn't recommend any food or any food changes uh, but pretty much what I'm trying to say is they they only recommended kibble type of foods they did not recommend raw food diet and um, anyway I, I just I started looking into other types of foods that could help the dog. I also, I've just been giving my dog um, from PetSmart. It's like soft food, raw food. It's called raw food, but it's not like the real raw food because the real raw food, you know, it has, it's like actually, you're actually giving the dog raw meat and you can tell that it's raw meat. And this type of uh, food from PetSmart or PetSmart or Petco both have them. They're kind of they're like processed and um, it just it doesn't look like actual raw food. But I would buy him that type of food because you know it's more safer. It's coming from a store that's reputable, and so they're going to you know be careful, make sure that there's no recalls or there's nothing like that. And um, it also has. Um, uh, vegetables. It has carrots and peas, and um, I think it's called Pet Fresh. And I would give him that, and also I would give him Green Tripe, but I would give him the one from Petco. Um, they're the only ones that have it, and it's a a can version. Um, I don't know if that's if it actually works because it is canned, and it's not like the natural one, and I don't know. I think it seemed to be working. It's it seemed to be helping him. He wasn't straight. He wasn't in pain as much, and he was able to defecate. But um, he still had the problem. He still had straining, and I had to make sure again to give him pumpkin every now and then, or every other day, sometimes, and olive oil, and it's so it didn't seem seem to be helping. I even. I would even give him a coconut oil because someone recommended that and still didn't really improve. It it's as if I had to keep giving him, you know, that the olive oil and the fiber. Um but at least he wasn't straining as much. He wasn't as much in pain, but sometimes he was. Um uh, now at this point I'm just really desperate because I don't know what to do I and I've been wanting to change it to the raw food diet and because he is five years old I don't know if he could be able to hand, handle that change I mean he's not a 10 year old dog either so he's not super old but I do think that it would it would be beneficial for him because I just think that the the kibble is really what is messing up with his digestive tract in some way and it, it's not healthy for the dogs it has all these fillers and all these other preservatives and chemicals that are not good for the dog anyway and i'm just thinking that that's what's causing the inflammation also the pet fresh food that i bought him it's not perfect either um it's actually processed just like the other food um the raw food diet would definitely have been better but because it wasn't too I, I didn't do too much research on it before and I wasn't too knowledgeable on it. I didn't want to do it because uh, 
I didn't want to mess up and give them the wrong portions or I didn't know really how to do it and I'm glad that I waited. I did my research and now I found out exactly how you're supposed to do it and it has, you know, certain portions. You can't just give the dog like a, a meat and that's it. Like you have to make sure that it has a bone in it and that it's, as long as it's raw, it's not going to affect him because the bones are softer when they're raw. And, uh, and then you have to give them different organs as well and, uh, green tripe and uh, probiotics or yogurt or kefir or something like that so that they're able to process the food and uh, fish oil um, and a little bit of vegetables but it's not too much fiber and um, and then what was it the so it's a uh, if you give him like hamburger type of uh, meat which is like of course, raw hamburger meat that you're supposed to give him calcium as well or give the dog calcium because uh, it, since it doesn't have bone, uh, eventually that uh, leaches the calcium from the dog's bones. So, you know, I'm glad I did the research beforehand. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have known how to portion it and you have to portion it correctly. Otherwise, it also messes up the dog's digestive tract. So... Um, that's the only option at this point that I'm considering and at this point I'm just thinking that perhaps this is something more deeper and that might needs like a surgical solution but none of these vets have you know recommended me to a specialist and it, I just they don't seem too concerned they just think that oh it's you know normal it's fine and I just think that it has a lot of urgency at this point and I'm trying to make like the first step or, or take action at this point because I see that my dog is in pain and he's struggling and he's still a young dog he's only five years old I, I just don't think you know that he's ready to go yet so I'm trying to find solutions I know that there is a solution out there and um maybe it might be something simple as the raw food diet change or I don't know but I, I do um, think that it might require surgery I've um, heard of through my mom she had a friend or, or someone that she knew that had a German Shepherd and had this issue as well and she had to take him to um, a place in Orange County uh, a, a vet specialist and the dog went through surgery and from what I understood is that it was very expensive, um, but it helped the dog. Um, I've also done research on that, on uh, perianal fistula and surgery for per perianal fistulas. And they say that sometimes it works and sometimes it comes back. And I only think that the reason why it comes back is, again, because of the diet, because of the food. They're not changing the food uh, but I, I am considering that, but at the same time, I'm trying to figure out if the solution isn't as bad or if there is an easier solution. Um, and yeah, I mean, if there's, that's all I can say for now.